And we're going to take a look at our whiteboard as we take a look at the Villanova Wildcats and what they were able to do against Butler to try to get them out of their rhythm, but why the Bulldogs decided to do exactly what they had done in the first half. I'm talking about man-to-man to -to zone concepts. So Villanova, when they started out in their man-to-man, it was business as usual for the opponents of Villanova in the last couple weeks. High ball screen where you start with the point guard up here and you bring the big up like this to set a screen and then you're either coming off the ball like this and then this guy's popping out or he rolls to the hoop as Omari Spellman has to either make the decision to come out and guard this guy right at the top of the key or sit back so that he can't drive by him. Now, unfortunately for Villanova, a lot of the times Omar Spellman was quite simply out of position. They were getting beat. Tom talked about it last week, the fact that in transition, Butler was able to set some of these ball screens as well and make things difficult. Listen, Villanova wasn't getting enough buckets in the first half to get back and set up in the half court, and when they were, Butler was still being successful. So what do they do? You're down to six guys. You go into zone. You try to stave off some of that fatigue by going into zone. Omari Spellman right here. You have your two wings out here, and then your two guards up here near the top of the, near the, top of the key. Point guard for Butler comes up the floor, hangs right here. Big in here, and what do you do? You come right up here and you set a ball screen. Now you make the Villanova make a decision. What are they going to do? Are they going to commit this defender over here, build a wall, and make the point guard make a decision? You know, in my estimation, it's unfortunate that that's not what they did. They brought Omari Spellman up here. He got caught in the middle, maybe even worse than what happened in the first half. Maybe a little bit of collapse here. Another guy out here, kick out. And fortunate for Nova, they just took a little bit, a little bit of that momentum away from Butler, forced them to execute in the half court, and they weren't quite as successful. But from my estimation, the zone did not perform well in the second half, and, and I think that that's a big issue. Now, what do I think Villanova could do? I don't see them doing this, but here's what I think could happen for Villanova to be successful against this zone. Right here, when this guy comes up, oh, excuse me, wrong color, comes up to set the pick, you can bring this defender right here. Build a wall and have this point guard make a decision because he's not going this way because the defender there, and now you're being guard by, guarded by another guard. You're not going this way because this guy is now switching, and he's not slipping because Omari Spellman, to some extent, is staying home. Now you have an athletic wing over here in Mikel Bridges that can begin to creep up and prevent that pass and start to sort of try to stave in the middle of that gap. Uh, I do think that in that zone, if there is a weakness, that if there's a guy over here in the corner, that extra pass can be made. But that's where you utilize the length of a Mikael Bridges just to kind of get in the way there, get in the middle of that passing lane. You know, that's one thing that I think Butler could have been more successful against Villanova with because the defense had holes the way they were playing it. And quite frankly, I think Omari Spellman is still struggling against the zone. Now I'm going to erase all this because the zone goes away on Saturday against Xavier. And why? It's because they're going to have two bigs on the floor at all times. And what are they going to do? The offense in some ways runs through these bigs, like Sean O'Mara. The big guy is not the most athletic guy you'll ever see. He didn't have a great game against Villanova the first time. Had a great game, though, against Butler, setting up guys with assists and being very patient in the lane with his back to the basket. The other guy, Tyreek Jones, is a sophomore. He's going to be on this side. Or Karim Cantor could be him as well. These guys that can play with their back to the basket. And it'll be a challenge for Villanova to go Omari Spellman here and not have Eric Paschal here. So I think you're going to see more time from Demir Cosby Roundtree. Now one guy I want to highlight for Xavier is Najee Marshall, a true freshman out of the greater D.C. area, put up double-digit points against Villanova and is coming into his own. He's a slashing forward that can either get into the teeth of the defense here in the middle or, as Villanova commits a guard, can stay out here, can hit a mid-range shot, or can hit a bucket from beyond the three-point line. 
clearly. We talk Xavier. We talk Trayvon Blewett. Possible All-American, some people are talking Player of the Year style numbers. Big, 6'5", long, rangy. Xavier actually doesn't shoot a lot of three-point baskets, but he's really good at pulling up in transition. A lot of what we saw from Keelan Marshall against Butler. Coming up the floor, defense getting back, trying to stop the ball in transition. Bang, pop, fire. He's that good, and if you get out and try to guard him there, he will blow by you and has enough weapons around the hoop to finish. I mentioned those big guys, Cantor, Jones, Sean O'Mara. This is a really good Xavier team. They're ranked four for a reason, and they're going to provide a big, big challenge for this Villanova basketball team on Saturday. We're going to preview more of it and get into some of these concepts on the other side. But this is our V's and O's segment, and we'll have Tom and Kevin back on the desk in a few minutes to recap.